Alrighty, um, interpretation of periapical lesions. So uh, periapical lesions are really important for us to be able to pick up on a radiograph um, for those times when we take a full mouth. Usually, I mean, if you're going to take a bite wing, you're not going to see it. But if we take a full mouth and um, we scan it, um, we want to be able to bring things to doctors' attentions when we um, have taken the x-rays, just in case they're in a rush and they don't see it or it's something very faint. Um, so we want to make sure that we're well trained to notice these abnormalities. So objectives identify different types of periapical lesions on radiographs, describe periapical lesions, and identify local factors contributing to periodontal lesions. So a uh, periodontal lesion um, most oftentimes is um, caused from uh, like a large carious lesion, um, but it can also be trauma and it can be periodontal disease as well. Um, inflammation of the pulp that extends to the bone around the tooth. Um, so the infection um, starts to resorb the bone, typically around the apex there. And um, so that's what leads to that radiolucency around the apex is the bone starts going away because the infection starts resorbing the bone. So what you start seeing is in the very early stages, um, and a lot of times, unless we have a very keen eye, we might not notice this happening, is the widening of the periapical um, periodontal ligaments. So you can see over here, the, um, the ligaments start to widen a little bit, and you can kind of see that like right here, and maybe even oh, that's a little more obvious there. Um, and then the next, um, Thing that will start to happen is you start to see an encapsulation. This is probably more that encapsulation stage. And then um, you can see a radiolucency um, that's not encapsulated um, which with condensing um, osteitis that is on the distal root here. But this over here is the condensing osteitis really clearly. I'm not so sure Let's see, I guess there is some around here, and it looks a little bit here, but this, this one, you can really see um, this condensing osteitis happening around these roots there. So it's a reaction of the bone to resist the bacterial infection. So you start building up, like walling off sort of a dense, densening, I don't know if that's the right word, of um, the bone down at the apices to kind of try and wall off the infection. And here's the little drawing of it. You can see how the bone, there's like, they've made it look more dense right in through here to try and wall off this infection. So there's um, a couple different types of radiolucencies. Or, um, there's apical granulomas. They're the most common radio, um, periapical radiolucency in a dental practice. And it's um, due to chronic inflammatory tissue. And it's the body's attempt to neutralize the toxic irritating factor. Um, it's often asymptomatic. The tooth is non-vital and it requires root canal therapy. Then there's acute apical abscess. This can be very painful. It's localized collection of pus at the um, apex or of the root. And that all that infection down there causes a lot of pressure and that pressure is very painful. It is very symptomatic, usually lingering pain after um, hot and cold. And then the tooth is non-vital and it requires uh, root canal therapy. Then there's chronic ab apical abscess, which is sort of a low-grade, long-standing inflammatory reaction to the toxic irritants, um, and that can be asymptomatic. Um, patients, you can say, oh, you have a peri you have an abscess down here. See this radiolucency? And patients would say, oh, that tooth doesn't bother me. I didn't know. Um, so sometimes you can see the, the results on the radiograph without the patient knowing. Oftentimes, though, there is what we call a fistula, and I talked about this a little bit in the other um, the other video where the the abscess drains the infection out of the fistula and that is oftentimes what keeps it from from hurting because it's almost like a pressure relief valve and so as long as that fistula is draining um, the abscess doesn't hurt the tooth is non-vital and it does require root canal therapy
or missing some some um, animation there. Okay. Um, so periapical lesions, well-defined radiolucent lesion at the apex. Here um, are a couple good pictures, really well-defined radiolucencies at the apex there. Tooth has um, a crown. So this one up here, this is what this is referring to. The tooth has a crown and a post, but there's no endodontic treatment. And then you can see there starts to be some um, radiolucency at the apex of this um, this anterior tooth. So that's what that one is talking about. These are just some other examples of well-defined radiolucent um, lesions at the apex. Relatively well-defined radiolucent um, at the apex and with a really large, large restoration. These are both really large restorations and that one is pretty well-defined and this one is just sort of widening and not as well-defined. So what is inside of this lesion? So what could be inside? Well, it kind of depends on what it is. If it's a cyst, um, it could just be um, cystic fluid or blood. Um, if it's a uh, uh, apex, uh, a periapical abscess, it could be pus. Um, it could also be soft tissue. Um, could be growing inside of there as well. Um, so it's impossible really to know until the lesion is removed and sometimes you can you can tell without a microscope because you'll just see pus come out or just it'll be tissue um, or um, lots of blood vessels or tissue um, young tissue cells but without having um, a biopsy or microscopic evaluation you really wouldn't know entirely what was in um, all of these um, lesions so here is a periapical lesion that has really it's acute exacerbation of the chronic periapical abscess and so it's caused a lot of swelling. You can see all the swelling on the side of his cheek here and down in here there's lots of swelling. So here's um, a panel that shows a large lesion right through here, acute exacerbation of a chronic periapical abscess. So that would cause that swelling in the cheek. You could see that um, on the outside as well. Here's just another um, image of periapical abscess. This one is happen happened after endodontic therapy, so sometimes um, the bone does not fill in or it can be recurrent. Um, then the root canal therapy failed and the bone is still has, maybe it um, re-resorbed from some more irritants that are, maybe they missed an accessory canal when they did the root canal, um, and so it needs to be retreated. Um, so abs of cysts, apical cysts, they look a little bit different. Fluid-filled lesions with an apic, um epithelial lining. They're painless unless they become infected. The tooth oftentimes is non-vital that's around the, um, the cyst, so oftentimes they will need uh, root canal therapy, usually bound by a thin line of sclerotic bone. So you can see these kind of thin linings of bone around the, um, around the cyst, right through here usually larger than a granuloma, and it originates from pre-existing periapical granulomas. So there may be a small granuloma, and then it grows into a cyst. So we have periapical granulomas. They can be um, acute apical abscesses, which usually results from like uh, an infection from a large cavity. It can be a chronic apical abscess, um, not really... Um, not really um, symptomatic. Um, maybe there's a draining fistula or there could be a large apical cyst. Um, so whether it's acute or chronic, a tooth with a periapical abscess is usually non-vital or almost pretty much always probably non-vital. An acute periapical abscess is painful. The pain may be intense, throbbing, constant. The tooth is sensitive to pressure, percussion, heat. And then a chronic periapical abscess is usually asymptomatic because the pus drains through that fistula that we we're talking about, sort of that pimple in the, in the gum, um, or the periodontal ligament space. So it might come up through the pocket, um, up around the sulcus area of the periodontal 
abdominal pocket area. Clinically, um, a, the fistula is a gum boil or a pimple, and it may be seen um, in the apical region of the tooth at the site of drainage. So sometimes you can follow from the outside of the the outside outer part of the fistula. You can follow the 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 path down to the apical um, the apical portion of the of the tooth, and you can follow it right down right down to the um, periapical abscess. So um, biopsy proven periapical cyst. So here is a big old cyst, and a biopsy would prove that that's what it was was a, a cyst, not an infection. And here they excised it. They took out the cyst. Kind of looks a little grody there, but they opened it up, took out the cyst, and oftentimes it'll um, fill back in with bone. Periapical lesions. Here's some more about that um, condensing osteitis. You can see how it's condensed bone. It's more radiolucent. It's the, again, the body's attempt to sort of wall off that infection or that inflammation. Uh, radiopaque border around the root tips. So there's um, an example there. Here's another example. You can see how it's more radiolucent. There's the radiolucent area, but then there's the more radiopaque area where the bone has kind of become more dense. It's more well-defined, sort of a halo effect of more dense bone around the radiolucency. And then here's another example, and there the um, this slide is talking about how sometimes this... Uh, radiolucency does not go back to normal even after the tooth is extracted. So here's a tooth that has a huge cavity. The body was starting to try and wall it off by building up all this dense bone um, to try and protect itself against this infection. They took out the tooth, and then eight years later, they take an um, an x-ray, you can see they also ended up losing this tooth as well. Eight years later, here is um, that dense bone still in that area. So the, the body never really um, went back to its regular bone. That, that dense bone has stayed there all those, all those years. So here's another um, situation that can happen, periapical cemental dysplasia. It's benign, slow-growing connective tissue um, proliferation. So you can see down and through here, there's this connective tissue that's just sort of, they're almost like tumors, sort of like connective tissue tumors down at the apices. Um, down here is another example of it. It looks quite different from this one. And um, it destroys the lamina dura and replaces trabecular bone with a fibrous tissue and varying amounts, oops, varying amounts of radiopaque material. So it's like it's ex it's exchanging the bone with connective tissue, which is totally crazy and we wouldn't want that. Um, so, um, but it says it's benign and slow growing. Um, and so I guess you would just observe it unless it starts to cause problems with um, causing symptoms with the teeth or causing some kind of an infection. So periapical lesions, non-pulp origin, um, periapical cementosis, osseous dysplasia, we saw that in the one prior, so that's that's this. Multiple lesions, mandibular anterior teeth are most affected, and it's most common in African-American females. The teeth are vital, so um, wouldn't necessarily need a root canal right away unless something started changing or the tooth started to develop symptoms. Periapical radiolucency related to periodontal disease. Um, so sometimes once the bone loss on the, this doesn't show it so much except for in these areas, but if the bone loss is happening so much in the facial or lingual or mesiodistal and it's getting close to the apices, there's some communication there, um, then you can start to get a periapical abscess, but it's due to the bone loss around the tooth. And so you start to get communication from the outside down to the apice, and that starts to formulate um, a periapical abscess, and you can get drainage, kind of pus will start to drain out from these periapical lesions.
Here's an example of a traumatic injury to a tooth, a fracture. You can see how it's fractured along, um, along the, the root here going horizontally. So um, there could be um, due to, uh, usually it's um, like a blow to the mouth. It's usually trauma is usually what causes that fracture. Here is um, just a radiograph. Um, I think if we were in class, we would say, um, what do you see in this image? And you would say the tooth number and what you see. So here we can see um, tooth number, I think 24, and that is a periapical abscess. And then with this image, what do you see here? You can see that con um, condensing osteitis and some peri some widening of the PDL down at the apices and some walling off some periapical abscesses starting there. Here you can start to see um, some widening of the periodontal um, ligaments down at the apices and some radiolucency. Same with here as well, periapical um, radiolucency there. Here we have a fractured root, and we can see some widening of the PDL over here. And then, um, basically, long story short, is a lot of times um, these these situations lo um, lead to tooth loss. So here you can see um, this was a relatively recent um, extraction because you can see kind of the um, space, the alveolar space after the tooth was taken out. So a lot of times, um, even with root canal therapy, um, a lot of times it, it's successful, but um, not always. Um, periapical abscesses can lose, lead to um, tooth loss. And so that's why we want to make sure that we are able to identify those um, times and we can um, kind of assess to see what's causing it, whether or not it's decay or um, some kind of root resorption or trauma or perio, uh, periodontal disease. So the take-home message would be um, patient history is important. Ask questions. If there's an unexplained radiolucency, um, it may be pathology, and so you want to find out um, what could be contributing to that. Look back at x-ray history. See if you missed something from previous. Um, sometimes it's like, oh, pull up there. Last time we had a PA, and, and then, oh my gosh, now you can start to see something that, that you missed last time, but now that it's gotten larger, you can see those telltale signs from years earlier. So it starts to um, train you to look a little bit closer at every single apice, um, every single part of the x-ray to make sure that you don't miss anything.